Hello folks, Sam from the Giant Tortoise Farm again today. Here to talk to you about sulcata tortoise shells. I'm going to show you some interesting patterns and some deviations in those patterns and exactly what these different uh, shells, uh, different, different scutes are actually called. Now, this tortoise actually has, sulcata tortoise has 37 normal scutes, 37 scutes. And the way that they're named is, these are the vertebral scutes that go down the center. You have this first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. And then these are the coastal scutes that are around the side. So it has eight coastal scutes. And then the scutes that go all around the edge here are called marginal scutes. So a normal sulcata tortoise has actually 23 marginal scutes. Tortoises that have a nuchal scute get that extra scute in the beginning right there. And that extra scute, scute gives them 24 scutes like you have in an Aldabra type tortoise. What's really interesting Take a look at this guy. He's got a totally different pattern. Look at that. What is actually happening here, instead of having five, one, two, three, four, five vertebral scutes, he only has three. And his two coastal scutes, two pairs of coastal scutes, have made it together and are, are just one big plate, but it's so symmetrical, it's really neat. He actually has two less scutes. So a normal sulcata tortoise has 37. This particular uh, little little guy here has only 35, and it's really an, it's really a neat pattern. Now, over the years, I've seen a lot of different patterns. I've seen that some that look like like butterflies to me, and some look like hearts. It's just really interesting to see that there is some de uh, deviation, uh, some genetic deviation in the scutes uh, in the patterns and everything, and that's what nature does to give everything a little bit of diversity. So you're seeing it right there in your sulcata tortoises that have a different number of plates. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the shell, how that shell is made. The shell of a sulcata tortoise, the, the spine and the ribs are actually fused together to the top of the shell. If you can take a look in there, Mario, I don't know if you can get in there. You can actually see the spinal bones, the back bones, are fused with the ribs. And that whole thing is covered, old by, covered over by what they call dermal plates. And over, that, over those dermal plates, you have a skin, and on top of that skin is where you get this carrot, which is typically about an eighth of an inch thick, but I've seen it almost five eighths of an inch th thick on, on some giant, on some bigger tortoises. So that's the way these shells are made. It's actually a composite. It's, it's made up of different layers, skeletal bones, and then you have your dermal bones, you have a layer of skin, and then you have a layer of keratin. So it's really neat, it's really interesting to see. Now, something else a lot of people ask is, well, how much does a tortoise shell weigh? It's about 20% of the body weight. Normally, uh, if you look at, say, say you had a tortoise that weighed 100 pounds, that shell would actually weigh about 20 pounds, about 20% of their body weight. Now, there's a little bit of uh, missing weight in there because you don't have any skeletal bones. You don't have the leg bones and you don't have the, the skull. And that's, the other bones are fused to the shell and are part of that, of that formula. But in these tortoises, uh, when you have the, just the shell, you don't have those extremities, those bones. So that adds a little bit of the weight. So if you add the skeletal, uh, the, the skeletal structure together with the shell structure, you know, you would probably have more like a 25, 28, maybe a 30% weight to ratio as far as bones are concerned to actually the whole animal. So it's really interesting to see. They carry a lot of weight in their muscles and in their body and in their body cavity by the nature that they're um, herbivores and what they call uh, hind gut fermentation. So what that means is that they have tremendous area to store a lot of food because that food moves through very slowly and needs to get processed. They're eating grass type of uh, and haze and vines and that type of digestion requires a lot longer of a di digestion time, which means there's much more feces or digestion in the system at the time, which adds to the, what the weight of the, what actually adds to the total weight of the animal. So some interesting things that we can see here with shells how tortoises uh, are formed. So the actual scientific name of a sulcata tortoise is Central Kelly's sulcata. And we just call them sulcata tortoises short. They come from Africa and they come from the Northern Africa, actually on the margins of the Sahara Desert. These are desert animals. And that's why it's so important in private collections that these animals get the heat and especially the sunlight that they need. 
They're desert animals. That's the part of the reason why they have these light, very light shells to reflect the heat. They're looking about ways of uh, deflecting the heat and conserving uh, hydration. That helps them conserve hydration. Also, you know, in sulcata tortoises, they have huge bladders, and they're actually able to retain that urine and go through a filtering process where they concentrate the urine, and that way they don't pee out their fluids. And they'll keep reducing that until you get down to the nitrates, which is just that white paste. So if you've ever wondered why you see all of this white paste urine or, or jelly-like urine in sulcata tortoises, it's because they're desert animals and they're conserving water. That, that's what the process is that you're seeing. Sulcata tortoises are the third largest tortoise. Um, and the, they are the largest mainland tortoise. Okay, so what does that exactly mean, mainland tortoise? That, that means from a continent like uh, North America, South America, uh, the European continent. Oops, hey, somebody's eating my shoe. So island tortoises, the Galapagos and the Aldabra, are bigger. Island tortoises or island species will always get bigger than mainland species because of the lack of predation. And they go through a process called island gigantism. And that's what makes, allows those giant tortoises to become so big. That's why island tortoises that come from small islands are so big. And you also have island dwarfism. So, you know, different species have responded uh, differently in, in certain situations. So something else interesting. So the heaviest sulcata tortoise that has been recorded was 231 pounds. Now, I've had males 175, 200 pounds, quite big. I've got actually a big pair in the back right now. We don't remember what they weigh. Did, did we weigh them? I don't remember what he weighed, but he's 32 inches. He's huge. He's got, he's got to weigh a lot. That's big for a sulcata tortoise. Now, it's, it's stated in a lot of books and journals that sulcata tortoise can live over 70 years. Well... I'll tell you folks, I believe they live a lot longer uh, than 70 years. Box turtles can live 150 years. I don't see why it's, it's not possible for these animals to live uh, 120 or 150 years. You know, I've had some animals that uh, I've had for over 30 years that were 30 years old when I got them. So they're, they're 60 years old already, and there's no signs of those animals stopping. I just don't see any aging process going on there. So my thought is that really live much longer than what, what they're given credit for. Now, sulcata tortoises grow very quickly. Uh, they go from two, two and a half inches when they're, when they're hatched, and they'll be six or seven inches in uh, three or four years. So they grow quite quickly. If you're getting a sulcata tortoise, Make sure you have a good environment. Read about them. These guys are tremendous. Uh, it's a fun tortoise. They're very active. They walk very quickly. And they, they'll dig, dig, dig. And they'll eat you out of house and home. But they have a lot of personality. It's, it's really a, 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 a great tortoise. And uh, it's just fun to study each individual species and see how they different, how they compare, how they're different, how their behaviors are different. It's something that I really like to do. That's it for now, folks. I hope you liked that video. Please subscribe. It helps me a lot. I really appreciate it. That's a wrap, folks, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.